Hey everyone, Greg Staley here from Diverge Media. Here's a question for you. Who decided who the witnesses were going to be at the Public Order Emergency Commission on the Emergencies Act? Now you can make submissions and ask to be a part of the commission, but ultimately I think it's the commissioner who decides who's going to be on the commission. Now I've been doing a little bit of digging into specifically days one to three. And let's talk about a couple of people that have already testified. Zexy Lee. And Victoria de la Ronde. You know, starting with Zexy Lee. Zexy Lee was the one who said that the protest in downtown Ottawa was like the movie The Purge. Uh, you know, where it's a lawless society and people go around killing each other. She said it was insane. It was the strangest Twilight Zone purge scenario where people weren't quite purging, but the opportunity was there because there's just no laws being enforced. In essence, it was a big... I think, in my opinion, is backed by zero fact. But who is Zexy Lee? This 22-year-old works for Shared Services Canada. Shared Services Canada uh, brought together IT resources from 42 departments. The scale, scope, and complexity of this type of merger is unparalleled. This work supports the government in building a modern, secure, and reliable platform for the digital delivery of programs and services to Canadians. It is mandated to transform how the government can and manages its IT infrastructure. Using the whole of government approaches, the department is delivering email, data center, network, and workplace technology devices services to departments and agencies. Now, Zexy Lee said she worked in data collection for Shared Services Canada. That means Zexy Lee is working for a governmental agency that is responsible for connecting 42 agencies to each other. That's a little bit weird, don't you think? Now on to Victoria de la Ron, the elderly woman who said she's hearing phantom horns and smelling phantom smells of diesel since the protest, or I mean, occupation. Now, Victoria de la Ron is a very accomplished woman, a very accomplished woman, and it makes me wonder why she was specifically was called to be a witness at this commission. You see, Victoria de Laurent has a bachelor's degree in psychology as well as a law degree, but that's not what piqued my interest. She spent roughly 25 years with the Department of Indian and Northern Affairs Canada. That's a pretty long working relationship with the Government of Canada. She also worked in the Department of Veteran Affairs. There's another connection to the government. But wait, there's more. Victoria de Laurent still runs a company called de Laurent International Incorporated, and that company's still in operation. And that company, as she admitted when she was being questioned, is still eligible to receive money from the government of Canada. But again, still not what piqued my interest. You see, what really started to pique my interest about Ms. Laurent and made me start questioning, why was she called to the commission? What is with these government relationships and the witnesses being called? You see, Ms. Laurent was also involved in the work on the North American Free Trade Agreement in the 1990s, where she led efforts to protect Aboriginal businesses. Yet another connection to the government. A very deep, deep connection. Helping with NAFTA agreements, not exactly a low-level involvement with the government of Canada. No, but what really piqued my interest about Ms. Laurent is the fact that she's a part of something called Women in Blockchain Canada. Ms. Laurent is listed as an advisor to Women in Blockchain Canada, and here's where it gets really interesting. One of the sponsors of Women in Blockchain Canada is Invest Ottawa. Guess who is the co-chair of Invest Ottawa's board of directors? None other than Mayor Watson. This is a few too many coincidences and a few too many connections to make me not question altogether how these witnesses ended up in front of the commission.